Good morning everybody, Ryan here with Southern Reptiles. I hope you are having a wonderful Monday and I am having a wonderful day. Soaking hatchlings, getting ready to ship out about 15 orders over the weekend. It's been a crazy weekend and, uh, and a fun weekend. Um, you know, I get to do what I love and uh, there's nothing, nothing better than that and getting to do what you love. And as you can hear, the uh, chickens in the background are waiting for food that I already gave them, but that's, that's the chickens. <laughs> if you are watching, please hit that subscribe button um, and also hit the bell notification and give me that thumbs up. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support, you know, Drop some comments, you know, say hi, whatever you guys want to say. Um, and I appreciate you guys tuning in. Got a couple different things for you today. And uh, we're going to have a fun episode. So let's do it. That's always a good sign. They're happy, healthy, and breeding. Loving the big enclosure, planning on adding some fountain grasses all along for more hiding places and more visual barriers. Just lots of projects since I've only been here since January. But that's always a good sight. All right, so I'm just out here feeding the Russians some hibiscus leaves that I just break off and throw, a little bit of romaine, some opuntia cactus, a little, little mixture of everything, and they, they're just coming out of the, the woodwork, as you can see. They're all over the place. One back there. Looking for some ground hatch babies would be nice, um, but not typical, but it's possible. I'm also gonna look for some Florida box hatchlings in here in a minute. But they're just chow hounds. I mean, that's a big female right there. She's a good seven inches. Another big female. Enclosure is really overgrown. There's so many hiding spots that they don't really dig. You know, like Russians sometimes will dig. They just bury themselves underneath these banana leaves and they have sun, shade, and they do great. Alright, so I'm over at by one of my many groups of redfoots and um, just looking around, gave them some mango to chow on and I was looking down here and I know by this banana tree there's two females that, that typically lay here and if you see, I know it's hard to see with the leaves, the ground kind of looks disturbed, the dirt's a little darker than the, the drier dirt around it. Um, so there's something going on here, either a test hole or, an, oh, there's an egg right there, not very deep. Let's see if I can zoom in for you and keep the banana leaves out of the way. There we go, there's an egg. All right, so I got it a little more exposed there. So we got one egg. And generally when the nest is shallow on the first egg, it's because there's a lot of eggs in the nest. So this is probably gonna be at least a five or six clutch.
do is try not to rotate them because I don't know. It could have been two or three days ago. Could have been yesterday. But there's a lot of eggs in here. Wow. Doing my best to film and get the eggs out. Not so easy. There's three. Four. I see two more in there. Try not to rotate. Come on. Okay. Five now. Six. All right, six red foot eggs. One of my females coming over to investigate what's going on. All right, back to filming. I either missed an egg or hit another clutch. Probably just missed an egg. There's another one way down here. Yeah, that looks pretty new. So that's seven. I got them under a banana leaf just trying to keep them out of the sun. It's so hot out. Seven egg clutch. Red foot. Thank you, tortoise gods. They bless us every day. Also, I do want to make note if you saw me out here in the last video, my wife was doing some yard work out here. She weeded and cleaned all this up and put this whole trim all around here. It looks great nice and clean there were just weeds and all kinds of stuff growing all over the place dead leaves pine needles and we're gonna plant some stuff hibiscus maybe not sure yet but looks awesome figured i'd do a little shot of all the cherry heads they're all out munching on missouri Kind of an overcast, hot, humid day, but this is like their prime. They love it when it's hot and shady. Everybody's out munching. I like to spread them around so they have to walk and, and you know, find the pellets, keep them stimulated. That guy there in the back is probably about over 60 years old. It was given to me by a woman and he was full grown when she found him, I believe 20 years ago now, it was the same size 20 years ago. Still breeds, still healthy, still active, amazing. Just grabbed a handful of some balsam apple. I've showed before, cherry heads love it. 
throw those in there as well for them to go after and they love them they zero in on them oh yeah it's a race And just to show you, for those who are curious, this is how my chickens get their water every day. Um, I fill this up about once a week. I'd say it's probably about a 50, 60 gallon barrel um, that I fill with water that runs down this pipe, gravity fed, and goes into that metal dish right there. And I spray that out once a week as well. I take the hose and just spray out any, sometimes there's li just little um, pine needles and things like that in there. So I just spray it out and they're munching away right now. And one of the girls is laying eggs. All right, the baby cherries are coming out, eating a little green. They're, they've just been chilling in the damp sphagnum moss under a ceramic heat emitter. But they are starting to get hungry, coming out looking for food. Gosh, and just take a look at the color on this one. Amazing. That is a beauty. It's so red, it's like almost pink in color and covering the entire head, top of the head. Just hanging out in the sphagnum moss. Bring out the sun a little more. Man, what a beauty. Also, just a little recommendation to you guys. Um, this is called diatomaceous earth. People who are looking to, you know, who, who have fire ants where they live and want to keep them under control. This stuff is non-toxic and you pour it on top of the ant pile. I have a big fire ant pile here and it basically just, um, dehydrates the whole thing and and kills the ants off so it works pretty well it's the best thing i've found that's non-toxic um i had another ant pile over here um that i ported on yesterday unfortunately when it rains it kind of cakes out but um you know it's the best thing to use and you know it's not toxic so you don't have to worry about any kind of chemical runoff or anything like that that will harm your tortoises all right so our newborn pancake hatched a couple days ago is getting its first soak it's kind of uh the vermiculite gets stuck to the the fluid that's inside the egg that's you know get is on the shell so they really need that soak or first rain in the wild to get you know the dirt and in this case vermiculite off of them and uh it's uh, a good clean up and a quick drink and it's doing really really well you know the, the species is truly amazing they're the flattest species but not only that but they are very malleable to where they're able to puff up themselves if they're wedged in rocks and a and uh, you know, some predator in the wild and in Tanzania and Africa tries to, to grab it, it will actually puff up um, to wedge itself in between the crevice that it hides in. And that's why in my adult enclosure, uh, which I recently sh showed in my last episode, um, there's lots of small hides they like to be in small crevices tight crevices that's where they feel mo most comfortable and they usually end up all in the same spot too so my plan is to clean all this up this wood was along the border over here 
um, and I'm gonna get vinyl coated wire and basically trench it along the entire perimeter of the pond. And I'm gonna get a trash pump and pump out this pond completely into the canal behind my house is a large canal and get everything out that I don't want in there. Um, there's about five Florida soft shells, a red eared slider, uh, two diamondback terrapins, um, and thousands of Mayan cichlids and tilapia. So <laughs> we just want to get things under control and secure the perimeter and that way I can, uh, and I'm gonna add a fountain, possibly a water feature, waterfall, something, um, add some natural plants and, uh, and make it a good turtle habitat. And I'm gonna just keep multiple species and they can come up on the bank, lay eggs. If I catch them, great. If not, you know, the babies will be secure in here and be found down the road eventually um, and uh, just have a giant turtle habitat and maybe even have some tortoises in here in some areas. Um, you know, it's not a steep drop off where the tortoise would walk in like a swimming pool and fall in. So, um, you know, they could live in here. Um, yeah, so. That is the plan. It's going to take some time, but just wanted to kind of outline it for some people and just got my trap going and uh, the, the amount of bait in here is just incredible for uh, turtles. So it's awesome. Actually catching some uh, fish for Fred. I got a bunch of Mayan cichlids in here aerator bringing him some live bait my trap this thing's been in the water for 10 minutes let's see how many fish it's got in it look at that one two three Ooh, one got out one two three four five six in 10 minutes this pond is just fully loaded with fish I'm gonna get these guys in the tub, but I want them out of the water. I like a live bait for the turtles. Fish shack. That's a nice. We big put that Nemish right there. And the bagger. Bagger. And there's a there's every grand there's a giant that they each other. The parents are in there, but there's about uh, four or five in here. Look at the little musk. Little tiny musk. <laughs> or C8 Woods. Like no, I didn't say seven, but there's oh, several. Yeah, there's a mess. Yeah, they're, they're mess. They're I mean, I mean, yes, they're either Eastern. There's, there's quite a few. Or, uh, Leatherhead. There's at least five. I've never seen that many at one time ever. Well, there's I've never seen more than three. Three. Four. Wow. Let's see what that's, yeah, they can't be pink better. Five. Is that right there? Yeah. Oh. There's, oh, there's the hatchling. I think it's the oh. same. Are you ready? Oh Fred, every time I come How here, I find it? I find a nest in it or a baby. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Look, uh, look, more down here. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Get a um, go grab a tub to put the egg, put the eggs in. I think there might be hatchlings yeah, coming out. I can't wait to see what this is. That's <laughs> it. Looks like a musk. If it's from this clutch, then these are about to hatch. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Which I said I'm not an incubator.
six eggs. And... Well, what's that baby? I mean, hey, 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 hey. You know the there was that? one egg on top I of had the ground baby. buried under leaves. I just moved my hand and found the egg and then <laughs> found the ones underneath. That's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys want to talk about tiny. <laughs> this is probably the smallest hatchling I have ever seen. What do you think? One gram, two grams at the most? I mean, if, it, if, if that. If I, that. I, I mean, mean and, and he was, and he or she was nipping at Fred before <laughs> trying to bite his finger. And we got how many eggs also? We got five, five, five eggs. eggs. And one hatchling, so I'm two for two at Fred's house <laughs> finding nests, and Fred's got quite the setup here, man. He's just an expert and just and happy. We just said it before: happy turtles, and, and make you know they make eggs and they make babies, and that's what's going on. So more in the light. Wow, little musk. Loggerhead musk. Oh, All right, we're in Fred's yellow foot enclosure. He just dug up one egg. Yellow foot hanging out right underneath him. <laughs> that we, we got more. Yeah. All right. So we're we're doing pretty good so far today. There's two. There's gotta be more than two. Yeah, there was two yesterday. Yeah. That I found um, on top of the ground. I think if they're buried, there's a better success rate, but not always. But this one sounds like maybe a little day. You hear that? It sounds. That's easy, though. Good one. No, it's good. Three. Nice. They usually don't lay this deep. Yeah. That might be a good sign, though. Usually when my eggs are, are deeper, they're, they're fertile and good eggs. This may be in, in, in my new uh, yellow set. Might be. So these might not be the. Alright, we got three eggs so far. Stay tuned. I'm going to give a hand to Fred. So we got the loggerhead musks, and then we went over to the adult yellowfoot Amazon basin yellowfoot enclosure, and we found three yellowfoot eggs uh, buried underneath the pallet that's kind of a. Um, keeps the, the house elevated off the ground and they look good so we shall see pretty good success rate at the Grunwald house all right y'all that's it for that episode thank you it was kind of a combination over the last day or two so um, I appreciate you watching a little mix up of a lot of content Thank you for the support and please continue to support the channel. Um, if you are watching, you know, remember to hit that like and subscribe and the bell notification. You'll see any future content coming out and there will be lots more content coming out. And don't forget as well to visit my website at this link above. You'll see any, you know, available tortoises I have pancakes i have a couple radiated tortoises left i have burmese stars i have leopards i have redfoots i have hermans i have russians um so just uh give me a call shoot me an email i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week and have a great night